Yes, North Town District of the Volta region. The group of armed men, numbering about 50, forcibly took over both stations synonymously, I beg your pardon, simultaneously, overpowering the police officers and making away with weapons in the armory. The group at Mepe, after hoisting a Western Togoland flag, joined their colleagues at the Abaime police station, seized two police vehicles, held three officers, including the police chief, hostage, and injured one. It is currently unclear if the perpetrators are members of the Western Togoland Restoration Front or not. My brother, my sister, this is the beginning of yet another terrorist group. My brother, my sister, you don't need a prophet. You don't need Angel Michael. Neither do you need Angel Gabriel to come down and tell you that this is the beginning of a terrorist group. It hurts me to say this. But I have to say it. Those of us who saw the beginning of such terrorist groups as Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, and the rest of them, it all started like this. Either in the name of religion, trying to force their religion on everyone, and demanding that if you don't belong to their religion, you must pack out of the area. Or face terrorism we saw how churches were bombed we saw how people claimed in the name of islam if you did not belong to the religion you must be killed yet the same people who preached islam went around bombing and killing innocent muslims and moxes my brother my sister we all saw how boko haram abducted a lot of girls and took them to the Sambisa forest. A lot of them they impregnated. A lot of them died. And a lot of them who had no access to any health facilities also died in childbirth. My brother, my sister, some of them as young as seven years old. My brother, my sister, if this is not terrorism, what is it? My brother, my sister, just yesterday we were talking about a certain plebiscite. The other day we were talking about dialogue. And some people don't understand. Some people think that by sitting down to dialogue with aggrieved people, it will be a precedence or an endorsement of the terrorist group. But my brother, my sister, a wise king never walks with a shield that is a swahili proverb if you are wise you always sleep with peace not in peace you sleep with peace a wise king or a king full of wisdom never walks with a shield it is a king who has caused so much problems it is a stupid king with no brains who would always walk with bodyguards and shields all over him? Please think about this proverb deeply. Western Togoland is here. We have had threats. We all saw a certain old man, 90 something plus, probably 107, because these days we don't even give our right ages. We cut it down by 20 years or 30 years. Football player who is approaching 70 years is only 22. And the moment they retire, they are about dying. In Ghana, retirement is death. You see a teacher, he's always 30 years every year. Every year he's 30 years. For the past 22 years, he's been 30 years every year. And when it's time for retirement, they see it as punishment. They see it as evil. Some even go to Juju. To be able to make officers forget that they have been 30 years, 22 years ago. My brother, my sister, if you have lived your life well, you would always declare your age with pride. If you have lived your life well and you are thankful for creation, 
Hey, if you have been 22, 30 years for the past 22 years, then how old is your 22 year old son? You had your 22 year old son when you were 8 years old. Lord, get up mercy. My brother, my sister, some people visit the barber's shop not to barber their hair but to dye their hair and their mustache and their beard. Sometimes they even dye their private parts. I pray to God that I don't digress. I hit the point right on the head. Hear me now. Western Togoland is here. We have had a certain plebiscite which has been making the rounds. I have read this plebiscite more than 20 times. And I've sought the attention of some lawyers who have also explained it to me over and over. My brother, my sister, you saw that old man who came out and told you point blank that they were ready for the Western Togoland thing. But you thought that he was a comedian and that he did not mean well and that he was not even uh, a threat. Forgetting that old men like him, especially in present day Ghana and our cultural setting, they earn and have a lot of respect. Especially that you live in a country where everything in white hair, gray hair, anything in gray hair is an epitome of wisdom. Forgetting that fools also grow, grow old. When fools grow old, it doesn't make them automatically wise. We have all fools, 90-year-old stupid idiotic fools. They are with us and walk with us, my brother, my sister, without mincing any word, without being ambiguous, no ambiguity, straight to the point. My brother, my sister, let's tackle this with all the seriousness it deserves. Rawlings never said anything, and you are from the area. From when this thing happened, a former president, where are the Voltarian MPs? Were they engaged? It should not even have become as big as it is right now. Did the MP sit down with these people in their own capacities to listen to what they had? What did they do to be able to suppress this kind of fire? Nothing. Now you've been able. They say when we have idle hands. The devil would always put weapons and tools in their hands to work. Better still, the devil finds work for idle hands. A lot of youths have no work to do. A lot of youth have no food to eat. They are just waiting for the next bandwagon and they jump onto it. Remember what President Kufo said a couple of months ago? He said the issue of homosexuality is becoming an issue in Ghana all because of poverty. Because by our cultural practices and norms homosexuality should never have been in our dictionary but no sir it is all over the place to the point that military officers who are lesbians are openly getting worded kissing deep 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 french kisses holding each other and smacking each other in very sensible positions my god have mercy military officers and they said oh they have been surcharged. They have been locked up at Gonda Barracks, uh, pending whatever. You are a joking country. You are a country of 30 million comedians. And your comedy is no more funny. Look at Western Togoland. A wise king will dispatch the various chiefs and sub-chiefs who these people respect. To sit back with them and try to find a way out. But no. You wait for it to take a national dimension. To the point that hooligans now can pick up guns and run into the STC. Firing shots all over the place. Holding hostage some of the drivers and setting aflame some of these buses. Hallelujah. You see where you have led this country to? You see? You see, a couple of weeks ago, you enthroned a Chinese man as a sub-chief of Abetifi. All because that bleach-faced Abetifi chief with no brains, my brother, my sister, 
was doing timber business with this Chinese man, we are told. Oh, we are doing business. We've allowed the Chinese to get into our forest and then cause deforestation and take the trees and whatever to China to sell. And it benefits the chief. So the chief, in a way, to authenticate the activities of this cockroach-eating Chinese boy, my brother, my sister, decided to enthrone him as Nkoswahini of Abetifi. An idiotic citizens of the area carried the smelly asshole Chinese boy on their heads, jumping around, playing a door. King, 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 my God. My brother, my sister, are we a comic nation? Do we have any seriousness at all? When Rawlings came in 1979, he wielded guns and ammunition and he put the fear of God in so many people. I believe that Rawlings single-handedly could have handled this Western Togoland issue. They're talking about a plebiscite. That plebiscite is still there. It has not changed. Can we sit with them and go from line to line and try to see what point they claim they have? But no. You are using guns and ammunition. Chasing them from left, right and center. Threatening the old dying soul. My God have mercy. And at the end of the day, terrorists who have wanted all this while to penetrate this country have found a loophole. When your aviation minister went to the gallery and told everybody in the world that your airport has so many thousands of loopholes. Where lies your security? Aviation minister, Mr. Ada, Kofi Ada, he told the whole world that your only international airport that you named after a villain from Alakle Kotoka, my brother, my sister, that that airport had so many thousands of loopholes. They thought they were discrediting Mahama and his people. Little did they know that they were only exposing us to terrorist attacks and threats. Today there is Western Togoland. They claim they even have a flag. They are carrying the flag all over the place. Setting cars on fire. Terrorizing innocent people who are applying the road. My brother, my sister, listen to what President Mahama has said. President Mahama yesterday decided to make this one known, and it was published today at 8.36 a.m. What did he say? I read from my joy online. He says, if everyone takes a piece of Ghana, what will be left? Mahama condemned separatist acts in the Volta region. Listen, and I read. First two paragraphs. The flag bearer of the opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, says as a sovereign republic, no one has a right to claim part of Ghana. While condemning some separatist acts in the Volta region, John Mahama said the actions of the secessionist group could be dire for the country if copied by other ethnic groups. His comment follows a series of attacks perpetrated by members of the Homeland Study Group Foundation on Friday in the Volta region. The alleged separatist group had blocked major entry points in the Volta region, claiming independence as a Western Togoland. Armed men, numbering about 50, also forcibly took over the Abeime and Mepa police stations simultaneously, overpowering the police officers and making away with the weapons in the armory. I'll leave it here. This is the so-called Western Togoland. All dressed. Look at them. Young men and young women. As against your old sickly men in power. Look at the youth. The youth whose future you have stolen all this while. The youth who you don't respect. You have messed up and wasted your hair days and your generation now you are coming to eat the generation of the youth i have said this time and again i will never authenticate any activity that is terrorist i will never authenticate western togoland boko haram or any such thing but my brother my sister as we keep saying stop treating symptoms deal with the root cause of the problem this matter 
is no matter at all. This issue is nothing. If we had engaged the local chiefs and the sub-chiefs, they know every single member of these, these people and these groups. If we had engaged the MPs who went to all the nooks and crannies to campaign in order to get votes, they know every hole where every rat lives in those areas when it comes to election time. If we had engaged these people to sit down with the people over some apetite or over some akple and fertility or akple and fertility toto, whatever it is local to the people, sit down. Let us talk about it. But some people will think that it's a way of authenticating it. Listen, when your son sets your house on fire, my brother, my sister, there is no need throwing your son back into the fire. A wise father will first put off the fire, salvage the remainder of the house, sit the son down and find out. Are your brains okay? Eh? Your elevators, do they go to the top floor? Are you gone cuckoo? Or maybe you are gone bananas? Now, if everything is okay with the sun, why did you do this? A, B, C, D, E, F. Couldn't there have been a better way of doing that? But you turn people and the youth into rebels when you approach violence with violence. It doesn't make sense. President Mahama has spoken. This is very wise. This is very wise. He is saying is everybody takes a chunk of Ghana. I believe that the northern people also have a, have a, a reason they want to leave Ghana. I believe that the western region has a way and a reason they want to leave Ghana. Greater Accra region, they also have a reason. They want, after all, everybody wants to be independent. But remember what Nkrumah said. Fragmentalism. Revisionism. Nkurma told us this. Fragmentalism, beware. Revisionism, beware. Nkurma, when he was preaching the union government, he was thinking about the whole of Africa coming together under one president and several other governors. They saw it to be dictatorial. He was against fragmentalism. That was why in the first place, the so-called Western Togoland became part of Ghana. In independence from 1956. He hated countries dividing themselves into small, small fragments. It will not help us. After all, together we stand and divide we fall. My brother, my sister, think about this seriously. This thing could have been handled better. And here, what the in fact, clergy is saying, the clergy, I'm talking about the Pentecostals, talking about so many other such people coming together. What are they saying? The Pentecostal Charismatic Council calls for independent mediators in secessionist tensions. Clergy is saying that we need a dialogue. So what is the point that you are authenticating a terrorist group? What is the point that you are trying to endorse a terrorist group? When people are aggrieved and they take laws into their own hands, first and foremost, let us quell the noise and sit with people and dialogue. A word to the wise is enough. Let's think about it. Let us think about this seriously. Or else, this beautiful country that Nigerians always say is very peaceful. A Nigerian friend of mine here visited me. And when he saw President Rawlings walking on the streets, that day I saw him and I even took a photograph with him. I wish I could post it, but it's okay. We have no time. I took a photograph with Rawlings right there at, uh, on the Oxford Street. He was walking. And my Nigerian friend said, what, former president? They are not shooting him. 
Boko Haram is not I said which Boko Haram Ghana we don't have that he, said, hey! he immediately started calling some Nigerians in Nigeria to tell them the horrible story that he saw in Ghana horrible in quotes he saw a former president walking so peacefully shaking hands with people with no security but with Western Togoland all these things will come to an end and now they are even saying that schools in the Volta region should close down until the Western Togoland issue becomes a thing of the past. Or else, I don't like what I'm going to say, but that's the reality. You see how Boko Haram went into the schools at Chibok and took innocent schoolgirls? These guys are not far from doing that. They are not far from killing their own people. They own their own brethren who they eat at plant and fertility, they chew it. They are not far from killing them, harassing them and terrorizing them in order to get whatever they think they want. Please, security is important, but dialogue. 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 You see, when the African man mentions one word three times, he wants you to take note. I appreciate you. Let me just gloss over this and then let's fly. Vice President Baumia has said something. He says, Mahama's incompetence, a known fact. And this is attributed to the Vice President, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. And I'm reading this from City Newsroom. He says, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has once again taken a swipe at John Dramani Mahama, the flag bearer of the main opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC. According to Dr. Baumia, Mr. Mahama showed incompetence during his tenure as president and lacks credibility. Dr. Baumia says the former president has a lack, a track record of mismanaging the Ghanaian economy. When he was president, speaking at the inauguration of aspirants unite for Nana, a group of defeated parliamentary aspirants in the new patriotic party's primaries, Dr. Baumia said, Mahama has no credibility. How many people agree with me that Dr. Baumia is all of a sudden becoming a comedian? How many people? How many people agree with me that Dr. Baumia is all of a sudden becoming a comedian? It looks like all he talks about is Mahama. Anytime he has to be in the news, he has to be Mahama. I will not continue with this. I appreciate you. In fact, if it's incompetence, Mahama is one of the most incompetent, most corrupt. But Nana Ado, is the great grandfather of Mahama. A word to the wise is in the east. 